Flying drones, psychic homes, killer reality shows. These sci-fi movies predicted a bizarre future, and we're living in it. It's no secret anymore that our phones are tailoring advertising content to us unless we jump through a lot of hoops to keep them from doing it. Mostly it's gathered through benign ways. Google something or look up toilet roll covers on Amazon to keep the cat from destroying your teepee and suddenly Google AdSense acts like you're an eccentric that wants to collect every crochet Barbie roll cover that's available on Etsy. It's weird how so many people have just accepted this as part of their lives today. It's not the fault of Minority Report, even though its slick futuristic world showed how invasive and personal personal advertising had become. With a quick scan of the eye, ads in subways and shopping centers creep into view, hawking name-brand beers to a fleeing John Anderton, played by Tom Cruise, which makes it easy for his pursuers to follow his trail. Thankfully, those big billboards along the freeways aren't here… yet. The Internet of Things is a phrase that can make the most hardened systems engineer shudder in terror. It sounds great in theory, and it looks awesome in science fiction movies. Logan's Run was the first to showcase a home that knew when its occupant came home and would manage the lights and other luxuries. Other flicks like 1999's cheesy Disney movie Smart House predicted the idea of an assistant with a personality. Siri hasn't evolved that far yet, but they're certainly trying to get her there. The reality of smart homes doesn't match the promise of fiction, but they're still evolving. IO IoT home networks are often riddled with compatibility issues and worse, security flaws. It's also not as predictive as Tony Stark's AI-assisted mansion, nor are most systems as intuitive as they should be. Smart homes are becoming more achievable by the day, but they're far from perfect, and they're not as common as the Jetsons predicted, yet. Hey Judy! Let's blast out! We'll be late for school! For decades, picturing a military war room involved a bunch of serious men in uniforms smoking cigars and staring at maps. Dr. Strangelove went a long way in constructing that mental image, but the truth is probably blander than that. However, technology has changed what war means, and those men are now wired with up-to-the-second computer analysis and satellite imagery so crisp that the real capabilities are classified. War Games was on the cutting edge, making early hacking techniques mainstream. But its Whopper, the movie's advanced computer, computer is the closest to today's reality. Today's war rooms are cutting-edge data centers used to calculate simulation models and a whole lot of other classified stuff. Whopper's tactical innocence is charming compared to what these new supercomputers can do, yet it still takes a human mind to catch the most dangerous mistakes programmed into these systems. Just like Stanislav Petrov in 1983, who recognized that his computer was giving him a false alarm. Fortunately, he chose not to start World War III. An unusual legal slap fight in 2011 may have helped establish the timeline of the tablet computer. Today, iPads, Microsoft Surfaces, and Samsung Galaxy Tabs are fixtures of everyday life, with around 53% of Americans owning one. But in the 2010s, companies were fighting to gain market traction against Apple and avoid infringement lawsuits. Stanley Kubrick's masterpiece, 2001 A Space Odyssey, had to get involved. The heart of the court battle hinged on whether Apple could claim they invented the concept of a computer tablet or if the idea of prior art applied. Since the tablet appears in 2001 and it looks similar to today's devices, Samsung argued that the computer tablet wasn't Apple's idea alone. The case took until 2018 to finally settle, and the results are still a little confusing. At any rate, the important thing is that Kubrick and writer Arthur C. Clarke imagined a tool so close to today's digital tablets that nobody, not even the courts, could ignore the futuristic impact 2001 had on today's tech. I'm afraid I agree with you. Today, the digital billboard is an increasingly present, vaguely annoying part of our existence. Its rise is framed by marketing materials with some of the most clinical, dystopian language you could ever read. Terms like digital out-of-home advertising are flung around like an uninvited Jared Leto wearing a cape at a beach party. Visiting Times Square or the streets of Tokyo at night feels like you're walking into a scene from Blade Runner. There's a good reason for that. Ridley Scott's sci-fi masterpiece was the first to paint the city skylines with electronic light. Now, its giant coke billboard and the glimpse of a smiling woman the size of Godzilla are almost quaint, next to today's OLED displays that glare down at passing crowds. It's definitely cool to look at, but it's still annoying. Released three years before the equally paranoid and arguably better enemy of the state, 1995's The Net with Sandra Bullock is a messy take on cybersecurity. Unfortunately, it also rang some fairly accurate warning bells about how easy it is to have your life destroyed with a few clicks of a mouse. The Net fails in how it portrays the fledgling internet, and its description of online backdoors is overdone. 
nonetheless, Angela Bennett's whole life is already accessible via the web, and it's easy for the film's terrorist hacker clique to get at her information, including her social security number, and erase her bank accounts. Today, that kind of attack is almost commonplace. Cybercrime's undergone a meteoric rise on pace with the popularity of the internet itself, and people are losing billions of dollars and our identities every year. Fortunately, fixing an attack is a little easier now than when Sandra Bullock's character went through it. Please, somebody, I need help, somebody. The idea of a universal translator has been a feature of science fiction novels for decades. It was often a major plot device in both the original Star Trek series and Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy saga. The translator is a constant in Star Trek, offering its assistance on film first by Star Trek The Motion Picture in 1979. Still, all these incarnations come pretty close to what we've got today. Let's talk. There will always be a need for human linguists to help us understand each other, but technology has stepped up to assist. Back in 1997, the early days of the public internet, AltaVista, now part of Yahoo, launched a web tool called Babelfish. Named for Douglas Adams' squirmy little helper, the site let users punch in words from their language and get a rough translation back almost instantly. Today, Google Assistant can translate a live conversation in near real time, so long as you have a compatible product like Google Home or your cell phone at hand. Toy drones can be a ton of fun. These wireless bits of technology have their roots in late 19th century aeronautics, with incendiary balloons taking center stage in Operation Outward in World War II. These early drones took a long time to reach their science fiction potential, with the movie showing off what they could do first. The Terminator made unmanned aircraft into something to be scared of. A flash forward into the post-Skynet future shows off the HK Aerial, an unmanned VTOL programmed to wipe out humanity. Star Wars snuck in a gentler kind of futuristic drone in 1977, well before James Cameron gave us nightmares. Star Wars has Jedi training drones and mouse droids, both of which are smart enough to do their jobs, but probably not capable of passing the Turing test. Today's drones, the ones that aren't toys, are frighteningly effective. From delivery drones to merciless war machines, they are part of today's landscape, for better and often for worse. Drones still rely on a human operator most of the time. To get a truly hands-off experience, artificial intelligence has to step in. In The Terminator, we get a good glimpse at what happens when Skynet starts taking its orders and its own safety a lot more seriously than its human makers had in mind. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem we've learned from this fictional mistake. In 2019, news broke that the U.S. Army was working on the Atlas program. The Advanced Targeting and Lethality Automated System, which sounds so homey and comforting, is potentially the first step towards a real-life Terminator tank. After the public release, the Defense Department quickly noticed that people were reasonably freaking out about AI murder robots and tried to refocus the conversation onto less lethal possibilities for the tech. Predictably, this cutting-edge program went dark. Did it get mothballed? Probably not. Since Milrem Robotics recently premiered a Type X semi-autonomous tank of its own, complete with an ominous live-fire exercise. When Star Trek premiered in the 60s, it introduced handheld communicators that looked like fancy walkie-talkies. When the franchise moved to the next generation, they were replaced by nifty comm badges worn high on the chest as an official insignia. But for their first movies, Kirk and the gang went for a more stylish method of communication. They wore the first smartwatches. These gadgets were largely limited to verbal communication. It wasn't until Back to the Future Part 2 that Doc Brown showed off his upgraded toy, a watch with an app that predicted down to the second what the weather could do. Today's popular smartwatches can do that and much more, with Fitbits, Galaxy watches, and the ever-present Apple Watch all clamoring to be our fashionable way to do most of what we do on our phones. That said, those weather apps still aren't perfectly on target with their predictions, but that's not their fault. Under the pen name Richard Bachman, Stephen King let his darker side out to play. One of the grim stories he published under that name was The Running Man, a dystopian sci-fi novella in which ecological disaster and extreme poverty drive people to risk their lives on game shows for money. The film adaptation, which stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, softens the premise, but only a little. In the movie, these reality murder games are a method of execution aired live to entertain the people living in a world of extreme poverty. The reality TV competition show American Gladiators premiered in 1989, two years after the film was released. According to the New York Post, one of the producers later admitted to Stephen D'Souza, 
screenwriter for The Running Man that the show was pitched using clips from the movie, but without the murder. That's the sort of thing Black Mirror warned us about. Meanwhile, reality TV game shows like Survivor continue to thrive. The Netflix-produced Squid Game show, which is based on the hit Korean series in which nearly everyone has to die in a monstrous battle royale, has received critical acclaim and is already working on a second season. I would like to extend a heartfelt welcome to you all. Star Trek IV The Voyage Home is arguably the most fun flick in the franchise. Kirk and his crew have to slingshot backward through time to 1980s Earth to retrieve a pair of humpback whales and save the future. It's up to Dr. McCoy and Chief Engineer Scott to figure out how to turn the cargo hold into a giant fish tank. Not much on Earth can take the stress required, so Scotty waltzes into a manufacturing plant and trades the recipe for transparent aluminum for the thick plexiglass they'll need. Transparent aluminum was a sci-fi dream in the movie, an eye-catcher for the fictional engineer running the plant. But research was already in progress on something almost exactly like it. Aluminum oxynitride is a ceramic polymer, which may not sound sexy or metallic, but it does exactly what Scotty predicted. Alon is crystal clear and extremely hard, capable of withstanding impact from high-caliber bullets. It's commercially available through Surmet and used by the military for infrared domes and as a translucent blast armor. In a pinch, you could probably make a really cool aquarium with it.